How often did you smoke, have sex before you gave it up? different people were telling me kind of about their feedback from it I decided to make a video about it because different people were like gosh bro you should really talk about this on YouTube as well so I decided to upload a poll on my story just to kind of talk about uh, some of the things to get some questions from people that maybe they could tell me their comments their concerns or ask any questions just about the journey about what I went through so that is the part that we're about to get into right now Q&A first one proud of you bro how did you find the strength to break out? Um, I would say, man, it was not easy. So in the beginning, when I first decided to make this journey, obviously, like with anything, you have to start in the beginning, like way before you actually decide to make this decision. So prior to me actually becoming like becoming a disciple or getting baptized, uh, wherever you're from, wherever you want to call it, I was having to actually put down situations to where I felt like I was like, my homeboys would be like, bro, you being gay. Like, why are you turning down, you know, this? But like, at the end of the day, I was, I had to kind of put myself in a position to start saying like, no, or not putting myself in temptation, tem tempting positions of like being with a, maybe a girl at, you know, late at night or maybe getting drunk as much. Um, like, it was a lot of things like that. You kind of have to set yourself up for success. So those are the biggest things that where I kind of changed would help me break out of doing that, so to speak. Is this something you plan to do or continue to do until marriage or in a relationship? So it's definitely something I'm planning and going to do until I get married because that's the goal. You know, I don't want to kind of live, live an impure life, of, you know, until then. I kind of want to do something that pleases God uh, before then. Um, so definitely, I'm waiting for marriage. Worth the wait, that's what I'm gonna do. And I know that it's not easy, but hey, if it was made to be easy, then everybody would be doing it, right? What are some things that God has revealed to you about yourself on your journey? That's a really good question because I think that since I've been doing this, I've gotten way more clarity about a lot of things in my life. I think as a man, when you decide to take, because we think we're very visual and uh, sexual guy people, I think that you can, like when you decide to not have sex anymore, uh, it provides a lot of clarity for you as a guy. And I say that because like, typically with us guys, us men, we are, sexual people we're, we're sexual creatures you know we we're very visual about everything and now that you take away the fathom of okay i'm not going to have sex now when you look at a woman it's like you don't waste time thinking about that anymore now you're looking at it of okay well i know i'm gonna wait till marriage or i know that the end result is we're not gonna have sex so now it's like Okay, you start looking at her personality, you start looking at, and not that guys don't, I didn't look at personalities before, but I think for me, I was just kind of like, oh, okay. I think it definitely revealed that I was impatient before in the past. Um, and I think it also revealed about like pride, um, about how I think men, especially myself, can be very prideful about a lot of situations that aren't, don't really require necessary pride. I think that we, since we are the man, we think of ourselves to a certain degree and sometimes we have to take our ego down a few notches to really kind of understand and bring ourselves back to the situation of trying to understand more. I think it's made me a way, I, I thought I was a pretty good communicator before, but I think it's made me an exceptionally better communicator now about being vulnerable and actually like communicating what how I feel about certain situations or issues. Beforehand, I think that like, you want what you want or your mind may be focused on malicious intent sometimes. As a guy, you don't really always see that. How often did you smoke, have sex before you gave it up? Ooh, so we just jumping right in and getting personal? Come on. So there's different points in my life where I think it was where it was pretty often. If we're talking about like 
the smoking weed part, I would definitely say I smoked weed just about maybe like three or four times a week, three, three or four times a week, probably since I was like, probably about 18 years old. And that just seemed like the thing to do when I was in college. I mean, all we did, like all we do is roll up after class, sometimes go to class high and like, that was just the, that was just the wave. Like we would just get high and, you know, do the thing. Um, as far as like that also played into obviously like having sex, I, I think that there was a point There was a point where I think I was ha I've had sex multiple times throughout the week, like every day. Um, I think that there was also a point in time in college where I was just being irresponsible and wild. And I also had sex a few times in one day. This is not something you should be proud of, but this is just a question I'm answering. <laughs> Has it been a challenge to date or have you taken a break from dating? So I actually have a girlfriend. Um, we've been together. Um, we actually, prior to me making the decision, we were like actually like talking and hanging out and whatnot. Um, and then we got into a relationship shortly after like I made the decision final. So we have been doing the celibate relationship thing. And that has been challenging for sure. Um, I think you just have to be extremely intentional when it comes to uh, having a relationship like that. So um, just to speak a little bit about that, like we don't spend the night in each other's houses like that. We, you know, there's a point in time where we didn't kiss for a month just because those certain things kind of get the, kind of get your jitters riled up a little, get you a little hot and bothered sometimes. So you just have to be uh, intentional about a lot of things. And I had to be intentional also just in my own life, just as a man by myself, about what I see and what I let my mind see because you know, the thing that best works is out of sight, out of mind. So most of the time, if I'm not able to like see anything that makes me struggle or, you know, sometimes I had to, like, I actually did have to unfollow like a lot of different girls on social media, even some that were my friends because, you know, when the summertime came, it got really hard because everybody's in these bikini photos. They're in Miami, they're in LA, they're at the beach twerking with their friends. Hey, yo. Your boy was like this, unfollow, 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 unfollow. Like, I couldn't take it. And for everybody, there are some people that might, and there might be a certain point to where it might not bother me. But in the beginning of the journey, you can't see that kind of stuff. It, it, it throws you off, like for real. Can you speak about your faith? So, I mean, with my faith, um, I do believe that, you know, God is uh, the Lord of my life. I think that I believe that Jesus Christ did die for our sins. And uh, those are the most convictions that I do share in my heart. Um, I was happy to be able to be baptized to have a new life because beforehand, like I was raised in the church, but now, um, now as being like an adult, I think I lost, I lost a lot of that. I kind of got into living my own life. And I never really was baptized like that. So when I actually started getting a chance to be able to read the Bible or read the Word, um, when I started studying the Bible with um, some brothers from my church, that was when I truly it started to click for me, like exactly like what I like what I wanted for my life and uh, where I was going and where I wanted to go. Because we talk about heaven, but are we really making any sacrifices to get there? And from my point of view, or where the way I was living, I wasn't really making any sacrifices. How is God's unphysical love more powerful than orgasm and weed? Woo! That's deep. That is some deep stuff right there. Um, I would say that I think that how his his love it overshines overshines is more powerful than orgasms and weed. For the simple fact that peace is what he provides. His love provides peace and direction. One of the biggest things for me of why I wanted to uh, learn more about God and like why exactly like I decided to make this journey was the biggest thing that I always prayed pray for was wisdom. I'm always prayed for understanding. I like to be in the know and I like to be able to help people. So this aligned with what I was trying to do um, as far as like the way I wanted to live my life. So when I decided to make this decision, 
it it was the peace that I got from God to be able in a direction of understanding how life goes because that I, I was a stressor. I, I'm a guy who still stresses a lot, a lot even to this day. But when I decided to actually make this decision and I kind of more more or less tried to read the word and understand what you know what God was trying to put in my life, I was able to see a lot of things that He was trying to pinpoint and put in certain paths for me. You know, so maybe when I didn't get a job um, that I wanted or maybe when an opportunity had a closed door, it more or less made me realize that that's not what he wanted for me and that there was a pathway that um, that he had open, that he truly wanted wanted for me. And, you know, when uh, one of the biggest things that like, I'm even learning right now currently in my life is that no one can take anything from you if it's for you. You know, if that is the path that Christ wants you to be, where he wants you to go or where God wants you to walk down, at the end of the day, that is... That is what is most important for you. And nobody can take that away from you. So once I, I truly started to realize that and like I kind of grew deeper, grew deeper in my faith and um, understood the love that God had for me, that was when I truly, truly like, you know, kind of realized that, wow, it's better to go in this direction than to smoke some weed or have sex. Do you cope with loneliness? aspect of celibacy um so no i don't cope with uh so i don't have to deal with being lonely uh, for the simple fact not just because i do have a girlfriend now, but you have i have like-minded people around me so when you have like-minded people around you that i do go to church with or that i've connected with or that agree with uh agree or maybe trying to do the same thing the type of journey that i'm on that you never do see loneliness in that. You you see that there's a community of people that are really trying to do the same thing and encouraging each other. So you don't, I, I've never really felt lonely doing the decision. Now, on the flip side, yes, it can be lonely if you are around people who aren't, don't, aren't people who are trying to do the same thing. And I think that when you are dating in relationships and you meet people that may not think the same way, may not want the same things from you, it does cause more, more of a ripple and it or a ripple and it does kind of like put you in a situation where you could be lonely because you're trying to say boom no boom no boom you're not for me or being you know and like i said before you you're able to see somebody for their personality a little bit quicker than just what you see on on, on the outside so you can deal with that but i think at the end of the day being around like-minded people will help you not feel as lonely What, how has your decision affected your relationship? Oh, it's affected it fine. I mean, because she's she's agreeing. We were both in agreement with this before we got together. This was a decision that we both wanted to make. So uh, it's been really great for our relationship. We've, it's actually been a journey because this is the first time both of us have done this before. So we, uh, it's been interesting. We've learned a lot about each other in the way that uh, communicate communication is very helpful. Who did you tell you were doing this and how did you hold yourself accountable? Um, so, I mean, definitely like there were different, um, I meet with a small group of men at my church weekly and there's a few guys in that group who I'm very close to and uh, they knew about this decision. They are the ones that actually, you know, questioned me on it, you know, and I kind of like showed me that this was kind of the way that I, I should go. And, you know, after doing some thinking about it, I, that was why I, why I made the decision kind of more so why I've decided to do it, you know, thinking about like how my life lined up with what, you know, the word says. So they do hold me accountable about it. And, you know, whenever I have like a, a hiccup or a situation where I kind of feel like, you know, like I may mess up or I'm struggling, I know I can always go to them for questions, concerns, and answers, and encouragement to be able to get back on the right path. And that's ultimately what we all need. You need that accountability part. Did you do any mental, physical exercises to help you through your journey? Um, I mean, I've always really worked out like prior to even making the decision. So it uh, it definitely helped more. You've definitely seen that like, you know, when you can kind of get a little bit more extra energy and testosterone, it definitely does help to let that energy out in the gym. So um, it definitely is a stress reliever as well. Um, being ex exercising, I did, uh, I, as you, um, in one of my other videos that you could see, um, 
put a thing right here. I started doing boxing. Uh, boxing was uh, something that I did take up that allowed me to be able to focus my mind a little bit more and a new physical activity that uh, that really helped out a lot. So I think that that really helped with my stress level. That also helped with um, being able to kind of focus my mind on other things. So, uh, I mean, that was like one of the things that I did. Mentally, I think I just prayed more. Being more prayerful um, or prayerful, so to speak, I think that that helped me also with my mental state. And like I was saying in one of my other questions, uh, one of other responses I was saying is that, you know, I had to take out some things from what I was seeing. I even had to, I had to start listening to like edited music, like the baby, Meg Thee Stallion. Those are two artists I really couldn't listen to in the beginning because a lot of their music was them like talking about sex. Like even though like their, you know, their stuff was boom, boom, boom. Like it was here good to listen to. I couldn't hear it at the beginning of a lot just because it would kind of mess me up in the head, you know, and not in like a bad way, but I just had to make sure that my mind was clear of just like thoughts, things that I would hear that maybe would put thoughts in my mind, if that makes sense. What sparked your desire to change your lifestyle? So that's, that's another really good question. I would say like, Obviously, like for this brand, I want to be able to extend the extend and really uplift black men specifically, but all men to be able to live a healthy, uh, a healthy lifestyle, just to be better people, just be to be a better man overall. And when I thought about like how I was living and like how what I wanted to be like and you know the way that I was, I knew exactly like what the mission truly was of why I started Lifestyle of TV. You know back in 2017 so I realized that that was something that was truly important to me and that was like kind of more of like a kickstart as to why I want to change and be more healthy because not saying that there aren't people who smoke weed aren't they aren't healthy but for me that I realized that I wasn't living a healthy lifestyle as much as I could be when I decided to make these decisions I'd actually I in the beginning I actually weighed like 195 but when I started working out and being a little bit more disciplined about how I was doing things after about what i want to say three to four months i had actually dropped i had dropped i was 195 so i right now um at this time i'm recording this i am 170 so yeah i'm i actually dropped a lot of weight you know um so that that's the crazy part about it and it really did help it really did help out to live that better lifestyle because i knew what kind of body i wanted i knew like what things I wanted to be able to accomplish, what kind of focus and discipline I wanted to have to be able to wake up early. So that was overall what kind of like kickstarted the, for my uh, motivation to do this. What goals were you aiming to accomplish? What happened next? How did it change you? So um, I can answer the part where it says, what goals was I aiming to accomplish? I definitely was more or less just aiming to accomplish like being able to be more disciplined. Overall, that was like one of the biggest ones for me, discipline and wisdom. Um, th those are just things that have always been important to me because I felt like those were what the keys for me was, was to, be to, to be successful. And I mean, to keep it real, I think like all men, I think that that's really important to be, or for all people, not just men, but for all people to be more disciplined because a lot of things you think about what we eat, or what we do with our daily lives and how we have to say no to certain things that we maybe want to do like those that's all like discipline so for me if you're able to really control that energy and um like especially taking away my the sexual energy that i was using in other places and actually for putting it back into my mind to be able to make this youtube channel and create content on instagram and you know just be able to do a lot more um, things to kind of maybe create and curate my business even more so that those are things that really, truly, like I, I want to accomplish and even grow more so. And if I was putting energy towards other places of distractions, I wouldn't be able to do things like this. What obstacles did I overcome? Hmm. I think I've overcome a lot of obstacles. Like I think that like, I think that like when you decide to make a decision um, as big as this one, um, that's different from a lot of people you see, you, you're, you're able to overcome like temptation. I'm able to be in a relationship. I'm able to treat my woman 
um, a whole lot better than maybe I've treated any other girl just because I'm able to love her differently, but also better. And in a spiritual manner, because I never really followed what the Bible really meant in order to how to really love a woman, how she should be treated. It also made me a better gentleman. You know, I talk, uh, if, you've, if you've been following this channel since 2017, you know I've talked about like the importance of being a gentleman. But I almost feel like until I decided to live this life, I wasn't an actual like gentleman up until I decided to make these decisions. So it, it definitely, those were obstacles that I would definitely say I've overcome. How did you make your hair look that curly? All right, well, if you check out some of my, my videos in this playlist, uh, that are going to swipe out on this card slider, you'll see uh, my hair grooming videos and you'll see the type of products that I use on my hair. Okay, cool. I've answered a few of your questions, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, this was not easy to talk about. And um, if you guys are still watching it, watching this video right now, I really appreciate you watching it. Um, it definitely, uh, it's definitely been a journey and I hope that this video encourages you. Definitely share this with other people because um, I want everybody to really know just kind of like, you know, what the journey was like. If anybody asks, you know, definitely reach out to me if you guys ever have any more questions. I, I would love to just kind of share more about, you know, my life and uh, my struggles and uh, what really goes on. Don't forget to subscribe if you guys are not yet. Definitely be a part of the channel, be a part of the family. I like, if you guys like videos like this, Drop a comment, let me know if, uh, if you like them. I would love to make more content like this for you guys, but I gotta know what you like, you feel me? I gotta know. It's your boy Trey.